my name is Benet. I am the vet tech here at Community Humane Shelter of Steuben County. We are here in taking this lovely kitty. Um, she came in as a stray yesterday. Um, she was found um, in, at the outlet malls in Fremont um, and we are just going to go ahead and intake her. Um, right now um, we are just naming her um, Caramel. First thing that we usually do when we get new animals in is we microchip scan them to um, check to see if they have a microchip in case they do belong to somebody. So this is a microchip scanner, one of the ones that we have. So I'm just going to scan her real fast. And we go all over the body because the microchip is usually just right under the skin and it travels as the cat grows or the animal itself grows and it did not beep indicating that she has one so we are marking that she has no microchip so before she leaves she will be microchipped next we are just going to do a visual inspection of her um, right now i do see that she does have a tick on her she has a little tick right here on her head so we will take that off of her with ticks, you want to make sure that you do get the head out so it does not cause any infection. Just like that. There we go, and I got the head. Other parts of the inspection of um, doing a cat intake is obviously attitude is one of them. Um, one of my other staff members is with me, Caressa. Um, she is going to be marking off on our intake checklist. Um, just going down the list here. Um, the first on the list is attitude. Um, obviously, she is a very, very friendly cat, so her attitude would be normal. Um, some cats come in and they are super, super scared, nervous, um, not very friendly, so that would be an indication of another. I'm on our list, but she's a very friendly cat, so she would be a normal cat. Um, next on it would be like hydration. So to check for hydration, we usually just pinch the skin and see if it bounces back. She is a little bit on the dehydration side, so we will give her some fluids. Um, and we usually do sub-Q fluids or um, subcutaneous sub fluids, which is under the skin, and that'll kind of help give her a little bit more hydration. And another way to tell if she needs fluids is if you look at her eyes, you can see a little bit of her third eyelid. It's kind of more visible than it should be. That's another indication that she is a little bit on the dehydrated side. So coat and skin. So since we did see that she did have a tick on her, I would mark that she had visible ticks on her, um, on the coat and skin part. Um, her coat does look fairly good um, skin wise. Um, I don't really see any flakiness on her skin at all. Um, I'm not really seeing any flea dirt or anything um, on her skin, maybe a little bit. So we'll treat her for possible fleas since there is a little bit of flakiness or a little bit of dark uh, flea dirt on there. As I said before, her eyes, her third eyelid is a little bit visible, so that was the dehydration. But other than that, her eyes look really clear. Her ears, um, she's got a little bit of a wound up here. Might be just from her scratching, or she might have gotten it caught on something. So that'll be marked. Um, her ears look fairly clean, so that's really good. Cats are really known to have ear mites, so they will usually be really, really dirty. Um, we'll have really nasty brown, black um, discharge or um, really goopiness to the ears. Um, and then what we would do is we would thoroughly clean the ears and then treat them with ear mite solution. So nose, she does not have any discharge coming out of her nose, her mouth and throat. She looks good in her mouth. There's no ulcers that I can clearly see. Her teeth look good. She looks like a fairly young cat, so she's parot, and there's a little bit of tartar on her teeth. Not a lot, sorry, sweetie. Um, so I would say that she's almost a year old, not quite a year yet, so maybe 10 months. She's fairly young.
Her gums are pigmented, which means that they are pink and black. But they are pink. They're not pale or anything, so that's good. Her legs and paws look really good. We usually check to see if they are declawed, and she clearly is not. When I push on her paws here, her nails that are usually claws or that are normally retracted back come out, and they look good. There's nothing that indicates infection or anything. They look really good there. So her abdominal, She's pretty tight in here, so she might just be a little bloaty. So we'll give her some warmer. Hopefully that'll go down. But she looks like she's doing good there anyway. So the next thing, the last thing on the um, checklist um, is going to be the temperature um, to make sure that she is not running a fever or that she is low on temperature. Animals, um, we check their temperatures by rectal, um, not under the tongue like normal humans. So it's normally very uncomfortable and unpleasant for them. If I could have an assistant with holding the kitty. Look at her, she's so cute. I know, isn't she cute? Purring up a storm. Okay. So her temperature is normal. Um, it was 102, and that is normal for our cats. Um, normal cat temperatures range from 100 to 102.5. Anything above that, um, 103 or higher, um, indicates that there's a fever. Um, if it's closer to 105 or 106, it is a very dangerous fever range and needs to be taken to a veterinary clinic as soon as possible. Um, that is very, very high and that could be very life-threatening for a cat. But she is in healthy, healthy uh, temperature range, so that's good. We're going to get her weight. She is... 5.5 which is a good weight kind of a good weight for her I would like to see her at maybe closer to maybe six six and a half pounds um, she is kind of on the skinny side I can feel her back her spine and her hips which usually you shouldn't be able to feel them pretty promptly like I can her so we'll be feeding her probably some kitten food for a short time just to kind of get some more protein in her hopefully get some weight on her really good and then before we do any poking we're going to get a picture of her so we can add it onto her profile that way she's got a visual on her pro electronic profile so when she is ready for adoption um, her profile will be um, listed on our website and people can see her picture then when she is available for adoption. The most common thing that cats will get, and that is very contagious to cats and humans, and other animals actually, is ringworm. Ringworm is not a worm, it is a topical fungus. So cats get it um, very easily because they have very fine fur and hairs. Um, so, and they are very, very easily um, contagious. So we use a black light because it'll show up um, in an apple green color if it is positive. So we are just going to casually glance over, look through and look over Miss Carmel. Make sure that she does not have any open scabs. She's got a little bit of glowing on her nose, but that could be just snot. Snot glows a different color um, than ringworm does. As you can see, my hand is kind of glowing from different things. <laughs> um, but usually common areas that cats will have it will be on their faces, around their ears, on their head. Um, on their feet, around their toes, 
on her, I am not seeing anything that indicates that she has ringworm, which is good because we do not want an infestation of ringworm going through our facility because we have a lot of cats here. So she is negative on the wood lamp test or black light test. And then she will be getting a series of boosters. Um, she will be getting the feline booster. It is the, the FVRCP booster. So this covers feline, rhinotracheitis, um, calicai, and panleukopenia. So um, followers have seen um, we've had panleukopenia come through here um, once um, over a year ago. Um, that was a very traumatic um, experience that we had. Um, we try to make sure that does not happen again. And that um, comes with making sure that all of our cats um, are up to date on their vaccinations. Um, also, the radiotracheitis um, is one of the common diseases that some cats will get. Um, so this is what that covers as well. Um, so um, when you get, when you go to the vet, um, this is one of the vaccinations that you can get um, at the vet, this is just one of the common ones that we give to our cats here because those are the common diseases that come through our shelter. She, like I said, she will be getting a series of these. So on uh, first intake, she will get one. Um, in a two week span, she will get another. And then in another two weeks, she will get a third one. So hopefully she will be getting at least three before she gets adopted. Um, at the very least, she will get two um, before she gets adopted. So that way she has at least two on board. And on with this, this goes sub, um, sub Q or subcutaneous, which is under the skin. So what we do is we just kind of pinch the skin a little bit. And in the tent, we just poke it under the skin. And I draw back, make sure there's no blood and push in. And then now she is vaccinated. With strays, we're just assuming that they have never been vaccinated in their entire life. We don't know where she came from. So we're just assuming that this is her very first vaccine that she's ever had. So we want to make sure that she is well protected as well as all of our other animals in the facility are protected as well. So we just want to make sure everybody is safe. Next thing that she is going to get is going to be um, a flea preventative. Um, actually, it's like a triple whammy. It is called a moxie. Um, it is a flea, a flea preventative, um, a monthly preventative for fleas. It is also a wormer. Um, it protects her from roundworms um, and I believe hookworms. Um, and it is also a uh, ear mite treatment. So if she did have any kind of ear mites or ear mite eggs um, in her ears, even though I looked in her ears and her ears were fairly clean, um, this will actually help protect her from them if she actually did have anything down inside that I could not see. And this is a topical. And this just goes as close to the skin as possible, just right on her back. I know. Now she is protected for a month. So next month she will get another treatment if she is still here. And then the last thing that we do before um, we give her anything else that she might need, um, as I said before at the beginning of the video, she is probably gonna need a little bit of more sub Q fluid since she was a little dehydrated. Um, I'm gonna give her some um, uh, Ponazuril, which is another form of wormer. Um, this actually controls another form of parasitic um, parasites. Um, they are coccidia. It is very common in cats, so she's going to get that. That way she is protected from that as well. And that is just an oral. And there we go. So since I aged her at about 10 months or so, um, we're going to go ahead and microchip her since she should be out of the range of being fragile like most kittens are um, we're going to go ahead and microchip her that way she's ready to go so what the microchip is is just another form of, of identification 
All of our animals leave here microchipped. So cats and dogs that get adopted will be microchipped. We also offer that service to um, outside pets. If you are interested, it is a $40 fee per pet. So if you are interested in getting your own pet microchipped, you're more than welcome to set up an appointment and come on in and get that done where you can microchip your pet for $40. Um, otherwise, if you adopt an animal from us, they will already be microchipped and it's already um, within that adoption fee. So with this, um, the microchip is just the size of a grain of rice. It's very, very small. Um, it goes in like a needle like I did when I gave her her vaccine. Um, it goes in a little bit deeper because it's got to go underneath the skin. Um, so it's a little bit more, more discomfort on her part, um, but it's really quick and simple. Um, so she might feel a little bit of discomfort, but not too much. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna bring her a little bit closer here. And this is gonna go right between her shoulder blades. I'm gonna do the tent like I did when I was doing her vaccine. I'm gonna go right under the skin, pop it in, and it should be in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my microchip scanner like I used before to make sure that it's actually in under her skin. Just like that. So now she's a microchipped cat. So when she gets adopted, that microchip will then be transferred over to her adopters and she will now be a identifi an identified cat if she happens to get out or if she becomes an indoor outdoor cat. Um, her adopters or her new owners will be able to identify her with that microchip. Okay, so since she does need fluids, um, some cats don't care to get fluids done, so it's not that enjoyable. Um, it's just as bad as a microchip or worse because their skin gets so tight because of the fluids. Like I said, it's gonna be sub Q, so it's gonna be under the skin. So she's gonna look like she's got a big old bubble on her back. Um, and it'll disperse into her tissues very slowly and gradually. So that bubble will eventually go away. Um, but it'll slowly just disperse and she will get hydrated um, just on a tiny, very slow manner. Um, so we're just going to make sure that there are no bubbles. All right, sweetie. So we're just gonna do the tent once more. I'm just gonna do it off to the side a little bit. And then we're just going to let the water flow. And we're just gonna sit here for a little bit. She's gonna get at least at least 50 um, mLs or milliliters of fluids. And we're just gonna sit here and give her love, make her comfortable, kind of keep her distracted so that the needle stays in. Sometimes they'll walk around and stuff and just kind of let her do her own thing. Just make sure that the needle's still in there. So I just finished up with her fluids. So she kind of has, it's more on her side than on her back. It's kind of like a little floppy. It's already kind of dissolved into her. So she was pretty dehydrated, but it's kind of a little floppy right here. So that'll eventually just dissolve into her. Um, but the final thing that we just do is um, before we put them back into their cage, um, we just give them a name tag. Since she is a female, we give her a little pink um, tat, uh, collar um, and we put her name on there and then we just put it around their neck. That way they are labeled because when they go into, when they go into general population for the public to see them, um, the people would like to see what their names are. And then that is how you intake a cat. So she has been vaccinated. She has been given her preventatives. She's been dewormed. Um, she has been given some fluids since she needed them. Now she just needs to just wait out her quarantine, which is about seven days in our intake area. Um, hopefully we can get her fixed um, in a quickly manner. She'll be available on our website when she is fixed um, and then when she's out on general, puppy, or general public in our public rooms, um, people will be able to see her and hopefully she'll be finding a good home.